How's it going? It's Brian Sochi getting beneath the mat. Another wrestling exclusive. Chris Jericho. I don't just want to say wrestling. This guy's got it all. You know, he's got Fozzie going on. He's got the Talk is Jericho podcast. Now, brand new book out. And I uh, started reading it. It's really good, Chris. The best in the world at what? I have no idea. You got to be feeling good. Looking for, uh, I guess this will be your third uh, bestseller. Yeah, man. Actually, it is my third bestseller, and uh, I appreciate you checking it out, which is funny because you think, oh, come on, does Jericho really need a third autobiography? You know, and it's like, yeah, President Clinton has one, and I have three, but I guess I just have a lot more stories than he does. Yeah, yeah, we'd, we'd rather read about your stories. Your, your writing style has always been good. I've been following it since uh, I remember when you were one of the first guys online doing your commentary stuff. I love the way you write, and, and I'm happy to say this is your fourth time on the show, which I think it's the most we've ever had any wrestler on. You're tied with Punk. I don't want to talk about him because the internet will catch on fire. They go crazy. I do want to say if people are going to buy this book, the best place to buy it in my estimation, I don't know if you've thought about plugging this, but I would say you should tell the people to go to Amazon.com because, what is it, you type in Jericho, you'd get double the money from your time it all together <laughs> yeah exactly man I, i'm uh, i'm making money all across the board and those, i think i'm getting five cents a book so uh <laughs> yeah go to amazon and, buy it and make my five cents but yeah man i mean that's the thing like I, i've never you know consider myself to be a wrestler i'm an entertainer you know it's what i do and that's why i think this book is the most diverse uh, of all the books i've written because there's so many different stories from so many different things from wrestling from rock and roll dancing stars hosting the Golden Gods Awards, you know, going to Iraq three times, uh, you know, just doing all these different things, getting knocked up by Mike Tyson, getting to a, a war with Mickey Rourke, whatever it may be, there's a lot of different things in there other than just, you know, tackle, drop down, leapfrog. That's right. I, I take great pride in that. Well, I want to talk about the book. I want to talk about uh, one of the things I saw you wrote in the beginning about Randy Orton. Um, I know it's shifting back to wrestling, but with Randy Orton, you had a lot of positive things to say about him, which I agree with. I think everything you said was spot on. However, why do you think it is that some fans, a lot of internet people and stuff, tend to give Randy a hard time? And, and do you think he even cares? I mean, really? No, 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 no he could care less. And nor should he care less. He's the best worker in the business. And I'll say that, and, and I love it when fans want to debate me about, uh, you know, I've been doing this for 24 years. I win. No debate. <laughs> uh, and that's what Internet fans do. You know, they'll, they'll and, nothing, and nothing against that. I mean, the Internet's a wonderful tool. I love it. I use oh, yeah. it every day. I probably overuse it as far as just a great way to connect with the fans and a great way to, you know, promote what you're doing and have some fun. But the bottom line is it also gives everybody the opportunity to have an opinion and to publish in a certain way, that opinion. So, you know, and there's always trends, and oh, John Cena, John Cena is this, John Cena is that. John Cena is the best thing to happen to the WWE, uh, and is still the biggest star in the WWE, and there's nothing you can say that's going to change that. But, you know, opinions uh, or Internet uh, thoughts are, are always kind of swaying one way or the other, but a lot of times it's, it's from unfounded people that don't really understand why they're saying what they're saying. Do you think, though, uh, you know, we're going to get back to the book, but now you just made me think of something else. Do you think that being a wrestling fan, uh, I mean, basically, I feel like fans of a lot of things, not just wrestling, they're always longing for the past. It was so much better back then. There was a lot of uh, rough stuff back then, too, they tend to forget about. But I, I don't know, and I'm not ripping on wrestling fans either, internet fans, because, you know, it's a good place to speak your voice, have your voice be heard. But do you think that they'll ever be happy? Because I feel like they're looking for so much negative that when are they ever going to get something that'll make them happy? How, how's that going to turn out? Do you think it'll affect the industry? But they'll keep watching. They'll just complain. But that's not even wrestling fans. I mean, I remember when, for example, when Tom Cruise was cast as Jack Reacher, and the people went nuts. So when, when Tom Cruise was cast as Lestat, I guess they just don't like Tom Cruise, but, you know, Ben Affleck is Batman. Like, it's just, oh, this is the worst, and this sucks, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you haven't even seen it yet. Like, what difference does it make who's playing the role? All that matters is if it's good or not. And you see that in wrestling. You see that in rock and roll. Metallica cut their hair. Mm. Oh, my God, it's the end of the world. It's like people just uh, want to express themselves. And like you said, sometimes I wonder if people will ever be happy. I, I, when you come back to the WWE, don't do anything but wrestle. Okay, I come back to the WWE uh, in the summer. Oh, he's only back for TVs and pay-per-views. No, I'm back for every show. Oh, he's just coming back to put people over. Okay, I win a match on pay-per-view. Oh, he's just coming back to bury people. You know, it's just, like, you just can't win sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's you know, when you're in this position that I'm in, you just have to have a thick skin and just do the best that you can do to put out the best products for uh, everything that, 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 you, that you work on. 
No, I agree. And I guess sometimes you have to you have to listen, but you don't always have to you have to be cognizant of what people are saying, but you don't have to change. You have to make them come to you. You're the celebrity, you're the one in the spotlight. And one of the ways I think you've always been good at doing that, and you talk about this in your book, a cool chapter focusing on your catchphrases. Now, for me, yeah. you're talking about how you came up with them. For me, some of my best ideas come to me. I don't know why, when I'm driving, maybe when I'm in the shower, or sometimes when I sit down and brainstorm, you never know. Uh, but I, I wonder, because mm-hmm. I think a little differently. I liked what you wrote, but I'm curious to go a little further with that. Uh, some of the catchphrases. I want to throw them out to you, and I want to see if you actually remember where you were when you came up when you said, I'm using that. Is that cool? You want to try that out? Yeah, let's do it, man. All right, how about uh, Ayatollah of Rock and Roll? Do you remember where you were when that happened, or if anyone helped you with it? Uh, I was probably, just, I think I used, started using that in WCW, and yeah. I just, I, I ripped that off from the movie The Road Warrior, you know, the Mad Max movie Road okay, Warrior, okay. where the guy used to say, I am the Ayatollah of Rock and Roll. I just thought that was so obnoxious. I'm just going to use it for myself. <laughs> a lot of my catchphrases come from movies, actually. Well, did Bad Mamma Jamma come from the Carl Carlton song, or what was that deal? Um, <laughs> I can't remember exactly where that came from. I do know that I, just, I heard it somewhere. I think it was a Rick James song or something. I just heard, you know, there's a bad mamma Carl Jamma. Carl Carlton, Jericho, really know your music. What come I, on. What, <laughs> Carl what Carlton. What I realized, though, is that the Bad Mamma Jamma is used for a female. Yeah, but yeah. Every time I, I want to use some uh, street slang, I'll have to check on what gender it's supposed <laughs> to be used for. You did that's probably what made it even more ridiculous. You did have that pretty blonde hair at one time, so, I mean, maybe that could have worked back then. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 10% gay anyways. <laughs> oh, man, be a star. Stop. Uh, last question, because I know you got to get off here. Uh, you seem to have a great relationship, and I think this is very smart with what people refer to the dirt sheet writers. Let's say Meltzer. I see him as a historian. I think he's good for the industry. But is that frowned Absolutely. upon? Is that frowned upon, that you have a relationship with him? I, I, no, I, I don't think so. It, it's, like, it's like, you know, it'd be like being, it'd be, uh, I'm an actor and I'm friends with Roger Ebert. Okay. You know, or it, it, you know, I'm a, I'm a I'm a musician. I'm a friends with David Frick or Lester Bangs. It's like he's 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 just reporting, and there's some critique. I mean, it's his opinions, but I don't. I never had any problem with that because I the only person that can tell me if I had a good match or not or a good performance is me. I know deep inside the moment that I'm done. That was great. That was okay. That was bad. I don't need to read it in a sheet to find out if it's good or bad. What I like about Dave's uh, writings is, like you said, he's an historian. Uh, you, know, you know, I can learn things about the business, about actual numbers, about history, about certain guys, you know, that sort of thing. And I think this is very important. And I think you have to, to accept that with open arms. If you don't, you're just cutting off a whole aspect of, uh, of the business for sure. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on today, Chris Jericho, the best in the world at what I have no idea. Available now, Amazon.com, keyword what? Uh, Jericho. <laughs> you heard Jericho. <laughs> Help him uh, make that money. He's always got good stuff going, a good book. And uh, last question, Bobby McShackleby. Who is he? I need to know this. Uh, it's probably a name that I just made up. I used to always use McShankleby. I'm not sure what, what what term it's used in the book. Do you know what term is used in the book? What I don't know if it's even it? in the book. I saw it uh, on an interview. We've used that for years since back when you were Moon Goose. You said Bobby oh, McShankleby. Yeah, I, I, Bob he was always the go-to, and then when I got bored of that, I think I used the Bobby McShankleby at some point. So. <laughs> well, that's that's our go-to. Go. <laughs> that's our go-to now for years. Chris Jericho, I'm sorry I'm rushing. I just got to get you off the line, but thanks again, man. I know you got a lot to do. Glad you made time to visit with us again, and we'll hit you up on Twitter, man. Uh, congrats and good luck for everything you do. All right, man. I'll be looking for McShankleby and Bobski on the independent wrestling team coming up. <laughs> All right, man. Trained by Bobby McShankleby, Chris Jericho. will be on Wikipedia. <laughs> Thanks again, buddy. Have a I great... Like it, man. See you, buddy. Be safe.